Okay, so this is my very first uh, YouTube uh, video which is going to present a rather unusual case. Uh, this is a surgical pathology case. More information can be found at surgicalpathologyatlas.com or pathohistology.com. So um, let's start the case. I'm going to use this actually as a test also to see how it's going to project and so forth. I'm using a 9 megapixel a camera with a CMOS chip so there might be some flickering and I'm also using a cam studio uh, to capture the um, live, live images. So this is a 70 years old man with a pleural plaque as we see here there is some unremarkable fat and there is this uh, dense collagenous tissue which is the actual uh, plaque. We also have a multiple pieces of uh, pleura and we can see this area right here which is rather unusual rather unusual so uh, basically what you have is this dense lymphoid infiltrate and then you have this is the pleural surface here this is part of the plaque and then you have these spindle cells you know extending into the into the fat so one cannot help it but to wonder if that's not a mesothelioma However, on this power, you can also see that there are some small nests of cells, these guys right here, and there are a few on the lower end as well, these people right here. Okay, so this is what we will be looking at. So first of all, to look at the uh, spindle cells, uh, you can see that there are many uh, uh, epithelioid kind of looking cells right here. You can see this one, for example, with a prominent uh, nucleolus. Okay, there is another one over here, and um, there is inflammation, of course, uh, which it's pretty unremarkable at this point. Here is some an another cell. You can see it's almost like a fried egg. Okay, you have this abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm and large nucleus, prominent nucleus. The nucleus is approximately 20, 20 something microns. The way you can tell, the normal lymphocyte right here is about 10 microns. If it fits twice, it's approximately 20 microns. There is another cell on this side with a prominent nucleus, which is a rather a big one, this one. Uh, and again, just to remind everybody, uh, the prominent cherry red nucleoli, uh, the nucleoli are usually associated with a pre-ribosome synthesis, so that indicates a either malignant or reactive process. It doesn't really have any, um, it's not very sensitive sign of malignancy, however. And now let's uh, look at uh, these um, small clusters here. You can see that these are actually arranged in groups. It doesn't really form a gland, uh, so you cannot, this, you cannot call this a true glandular structure. There is no uh, glandular basal membrane. As you can see, these are just cells arranged together uh, forming a pseudogland. Let's call it a pseudogland for uh, for now. Okay, so this this uh, findings were actually quite worrisome that we might be dealing with a uh, some kind of malignant process here. Even though at this point we didn't really know what it is. Uh, clinically, this uh, the patient had absolutely no clinical evidence of tumor anywhere in the body, anywhere. CT scan. PET scan, chest x-rays, he's free of disease as far as the clinicians are concerned. Here's another of these cells with abundant eosinophilic cytoplasm, just sits by itself in this uh, very fibrous uh, neighborhood here. Um, so the question is what you do first. Of course, your primary differential always will be mesothelioma versus sadenocarcinoma. And uh, we actually did some immunostains. I'm going to show you the most significant ones. Uh, Cauretinin was negative in uh, these groups of cells uh, and this is a CEA stain as you can see worked pretty good okay showing you these uh, large clusters of cells we're looking at the brown color um, these cells are positive for CEA which makes it you know uh, adenocarcinoma cells uh, and these are actually a true glands probably so uh, we also did another uh, stain which is a TTF1 this is a um, thyroid transcription factor 1 which is very good for primary lung carcinomas and thyroid carcinomas and you can see that these small nests um, are actually positive the stain is nuclear uh, so only the nuclei should be uh, positive in order to call uh, this stain um, uh, true positive and as you can see 
here for example this cell you can see that the nucleus is uh, black okay due to the peroxidase and you have this uh, cytoplasm very scanty cytoplasm around it which is negative so uh, at this point uh, we can say that the tumor is positive for TGF1 positive for CEA uh, some other stains we did like a berry P4 for example were also positive so this makes it an epithelial neoplasm or a primary pulmonary adenocarcinoma arising in a pleural plaque now, because the patient has no clinical picture of lung adenocarcinoma primary, lung tumor cannot be found anywhere in both lungs. Um, this is actually the primary uh, tumor here, which is arising in a pleural plaque. This is known in the literature as pseudomesoteliomatous pulmonary adenocarcinoma. It's form of adenocarcinoma. It's usually poorly differentiated uh, with a bad prognosis which actually arises in a pleural plaque and spreads along the pleural surface, mimicking mesothelioma, thus pseudomesotheliomatous adenocarcinoma. Uh, the term just implies a pattern of morphology, uh, but the main diagnosis here is that this is a pulmonary adenocarcinoma and should be treated as uh, such. Okay, I hope you like this uh, kind of unusual case at this point. If you have any comments, um, thank you very much. Um, and uh, please uh, join me at surgicalpathologyatlas.com or pathohistology.com. If you want to comment or you have any suggestions about uh, future case presentations. Okay, thank you.